All right, we're going to take a look at using mod mode map and the crocodile hunter, but this time on the Raspberry Pi 4. I was able to work out the uh, Arch 64 support for uh, crocodile hunter and uh, got that built in a new wyvern image for the Raspberry Pi. And it was my goal to show uh, the ability to run a crocodile hunter server and then the uh, agent, I guess you'd say, on the Pi and have that information push, pushed back to the server. Uh, it's either something I'm doing wrong or a misunderstanding on my part. Uh, I'll kind of show what I've worked out, but I don't have it working exactly like I envisioned. So uh, we'll take a look at first running. The, oh, and I should point out there's a B205 Mini plugged in. Um, works really well. You could try some other SDRs, uh, but for this video, it's a B205 Mini Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte. And then I got Dragon OS R12 um, here on the laptop uh, running live. So first up, mod mode map uh, maps 2G, 3G, 4G uh, cellular networks in real time. Uh, I did not include the ability to use uh, the Android phone with it because it just took up too much space. So we're just going to focus on using SDRs. And specifically for this video, we'll look at using the SRS LTE engine. So we'll have one window here uh, on the, and I'll show starting from scratch here. We'll log into the uh, Wyvern image with the default user of Ubuntu, and I know the IP address on my network, and the default password is Dragon. Once I'm in, I'll change the user source mod mode map directory and have a look around there. When you run this, any output is going to be saved in a JSON file, so that's pretty handy. So we need to run, we'll run sudo python 3 mod mode map, do m for and use the SRS LTE engine and band. I know there's some stuff on band 12. Then. So this is going to use the B205, like I said. It's going to eventually spit back some information on cells that it finds. I'm mainly looking for the downlink information. So for example, here's some uh, information already coming back. Okay, and then over on this side, I'm going to go, again, I am logged into the Pi, and I'm going to take a look in the user source Crocodile Hunter folder, and we'll start, uh, we'll start from scratch here. There is a MySQL uh, Marina deep, uh, database that's running in the background. Um, so that does seem to be working as well on the Pi. Uh, I'm going to copy over uh, an uh, example config to just straight config.ini. And let's run the Crocodile Hunter one time because you'll see, well, actually, if you take a look at the config.ini, it's got all this extra information afterwards. Uh, I just find it easiest if I start the Crocodile Hunter in a way that I know it's not going to actually run and do anything. That's fine. There's probably a better way to do this, but then cleans that file up. What we're going to do is we'll change the crash timeout to 120 recommends for the Pi. We won't change the MySQL stuff because that's the same. And I'm not really uh, signing up for a Wiggle or, or OpenCell ID. Uh, you'd want to do that, though, to get all the information relevant to your GPS location. So you'd also want to put that or use the uh, GPSD information here. And I've shown in previous videos, it's the same thing on the Pi. Uh, if you look in the... default GPSD file there. 
and you could uh, adjust as needed. I just went ahead and turned it all on, but this does assume that you have a USB GPS. Anyways, let's see. Back to editing this. We'll go with a default project, and since we're doing this manually, we'll add the information here, just like this, and I'll use some of the downlink information from over here. So, for example, just start plugging it in. You get the idea. We'll just try this here. So we'll shut down mod mode map on this side. Come over here. We'll start the crocodile hunter. We'll take a look at its options. And we're going to run it with a that default project that I started putting the information under. We'll do dash uh, debug so we can see what's going on. We'll disable the GPS and disable Waggle. So we'll run this and again it should use the um, B205 Mini and one thing I'll point out so on the Crocodile Hunter uh, page here and again this is uh, Crowd Honor is a tool to hunt fake Eno bees. Uh, you can read more about it there. But the thing I want to point out about the Pi is uh, they note they don't really support the Pi 3 due to probably not having enough processing power, and that you can speed up the Pi 4 with some overclocking information here, which I've not done. And I don't know, I might have to actually do it with a, uh, I don't know, I have to figure that out because I'm not using Raspbian. Uh, so I haven't actually did that yet. But you'll see uh, it's going to be running here, so at least it does run. And while that's running, let's change into the user source another Crocodile Hunter, because this is what I had hoped to show, and it's not really working like I thought, is the API. So if we read about the API, you can run an API server, and then run uh, on the Pi would be the client and can push towers back to the server. So if we go into the user source Crocodile Hunter and let's edit the config.ini on this side and we'll let the host run on 0000, that should be fine. And really it's just the host and the port that's all that, that I think is going to apply here. So if I run, uh, let's see, sudo 3, API server, ah, my mistake. So we want to, so the server, we've gotten so many windows going on here, the server is back on the full Dragon OS. Um, it, that's running live here. So that's where I want to go into the Crocodile Hunter source. Take a look at its config.ini. Yep, the host and port. I tried a couple other projects to see uh, if I could get this to push the information into the Marina uh, database, the MySQL database, but doesn't seem to be the case, so I'll have to look at it closer. But just to give you an idea, if we do sudo python3 and we do the API server, and I actually had shut down the server while I was testing here, so I'll start that back up. You shouldn't have to do this when you're, and it may be something to do with me running this live, I don't know. So now I'm running the server back here on the uh, 
main instance of Dragon OS. So let's clean this up. So now if I had got information here, what I want to be able to do, and we'll use this, we need to get an API key first. So I'll change to, because I have to do an environment tool uh, variable, change the sudo su on the pi. We'll export the Crocodile Hunter project. We'll just again refer to default and we will sign up and get a key here. So enter a name. Let's do three. So now in this window down here, we should see some interaction. Oh, well we need to we need to edit the config.ini and change the API information on the Pi to point at the IP address of the server, which in this case is dot four. All right. So now let's try this. Okay, so now we see the connection here. Added a user, test three, and I'll have to go into the database later and confirm that actually did anything. Um, nothing really stands out to me going wrong here. The API key is set, which I see it get uh, it was put into here. So let's see. What, what you should be able to do is push these towers back and I don't see that happening so if uh, so if we did get some tower information you should be able to run this and well, we actually did get towers. It pushed four back to the server, but that's actually not really happening. So if we go, if I pull up the IP of the Pi, in this case, the uh, dot five port five thousand. You're going to see it's actually uh, so it's in the middle of the ocean because the GPS information wasn't set, but this is uh, working uh, on the Pi here. So we got some information on that cell, and we can see it's still running in the background. I have just not uh, seen the information from the um, client side here be pushed back to the server. So I still figure that out, but at least for now, uh, Mod Mode Map and uh, Crocodile Hunter are running on the Raspberry Pi. And in this case with the B205 Mini, it should be fine with the Lime SDR and also the Blade RF. Uh, if you refer to the video that I did on the Blade RF that shows a quick modification, uh, at least in my experience I've had to do on the uh, um, trying to think on the uh, SRS LTE build for the Blade RF um, so there you go there's some more things up and running uh, I'll put a link to the beta 3 Wyvern image uh, with a readme that you can find in the github that um, will show some more that has been added and uh yeah all right
Thanks.